Very surprising and breaking news. Apparently, soft drink sales in North America have plummeted in recent years, and as a result, sparkling water has stepped up to replace it. But with the rise of sparkling water in cans also came the rise of SodaStream. SodaStream claims that you can save money and save the planet by using their device, and you can get your delicious sparkly bubbly water at the same time. So is this going to be the next air fryer, the countertop appliance that takes over the world? Let's get into it. And a huge thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this video. Ever since humans figured out how to add bubbles to water, we haven't been able to get enough of it. But until recently, most people preferred to drink their bubbly beverages with an extra bit of flavor and sugar aka soda, or pop, depending on where you're from in the world. Sparkling water has actually been around since the 17th century, apparently, and it's been a staple of European restaurants and households for decades. But here in North America, most people turned up their noses at this sparkly new fantastical beverage until just moments ago. Before brands like La Croix and Bubbly took over, sparkling water brands like Perrier and San Pellegrino were classy drink choices that you might see at fancy restaurants, but not something that made it into the summer barbecue or pool party scene. All of that changed, however, a few years ago when we saw the decline of Big Soda happening all across North America. In 2019, sales of soda hit a 30-year low in the U.S. thanks to some not-so-fun health risks. From the sugary high fructose corn syrup to the fake flavors, soda was declared terrible for you, which is not surprising at all. But despite this being common knowledge for quite a long time, this was finally the time when people started to kick their addiction to this stuff. Now, despite the randomness of people's decision to make this shift, it was around the same time that the marketing teams at the sparkling water companies really started to go ham. Flavored seltzers emerged as a low calorie and low sugar carbonated alternative. Around 2016, we saw the cult of La Croix, where people basically replaced their soda consumption by drinking six cans of La Croix a day. And the ironic thing is, is this stuff's been around since 1981 and it's made in Wisconsin. I just can't imagine what would happen to your body if you drank six cans of Mountain Dew a day. Would you die or become a superhero? To maintain their share of the beverage market, soda brands like Coca-Cola release their own flavors of sparkling waters, which is why the sparkling water aisle at the grocery store is now just insanely massive. But on top of this, we've seen the ripple effect on the shelves of liquor stores too. The seltzer White Claw world would not have existed without this shift, and that's why we're so stoked to say that this video is sponsored by Bud Light Hard Soda. <laughs> Could you imagine if we were sponsored by Bud Light? <laughs> oh man, but they do look pretty good though, to be honest. Now, if hearing about businesses and the way they operate gets you as excited as it does me, then you'll probably like our sponsor for today's video, Shopify. Now, if you don't already know what Shopify is, it is an easy all-in-one commerce platform for anyone to start, grow, and manage their business. They make it super, super easy for you to set up a small business online. Plus, Shopify supports businesses along the entire journey, giving them the resources they need to grow. Shopify lets you sell online, in person, Person and on all major social media platforms. We'd like to see Shopify as like a facilitator for new business ideas, not just an online marketplace. So if you click the link down in the description, you'll get a step-by-step -step guide on how to launch a store through Shopify. It's really, really simple and you can get access to a 14-day free trial if you get started through the link down in the description. A huge thank you to Shopify for sponsoring this video, making our content free for you. Let's get back into the video. But it wasn't just other canned beverages that were primed and ready to take advantage of the situation. SodaStream was right there with the rest of the bubbly gang, making sure that their technology wasn't taken for granted in this big shakeup. Now, if you're not up to speed on what a SodaStream actually is, let me inform you. SodaStream machines use canisters of carbon monoxide to pump bubbles into your tap water. And they even partnered with Bubbly Water to sell flavor drops after their merger, 
with PepsiCo. The company was actually founded in 1903, but most people in North America didn't know that these machines existed until literally just a few years ago. During most of the 20th century, soda was a toy for the upper class over in England. In 2007, an Israeli private equity firm bought SodaStream, reinvigorated the brand, and brought it to North America. SodaStream's new CEO, Daniel Birnbaum, had major beef with the soda and bottled water industry. In 2012, he ranted to Forbes magazine about how evil and broken those industries are. He said, the world has a drinking problem. They are consuming these bottles and cans they don't need. It should be illegal. Now, when he made this proclamation from the top of a mountain, I'm assuming, he made it his mission to convert 20% of US households to stop consuming beverages and single use bottles and cans in the next 10 years, which is, ironically, the year we're making this video. Now, it's kind of hard to find data on whether or not the company actually accomplished that goal, but something tells me that if they did, they would have put it on their website by now. What they are saying, however, is that the one reusable SodaStream bottle that you get with your device can replace 3,070 single-use plastic bottles. So yes, there's reason to believe that this technology could help us keep single-use plastic bottles and cans out of the landfill. Here's the thing. SodaStream may genuinely want to stop people from using canned and bottled water in their home and use the SodaStream instead, but you know who just bought SodaStream back in 2019? Pepsi-Cola for $3.2 billion. You were the chosen one! It was said that you would destroy Pepsi-Cola. Not join them! That's right. The people that they are fighting are the ones that just bought them out. Now, I don't want to say that this means the SodaStream is not useful, that it doesn't serve the purpose of, of doing what it, they claim to do. I'm just saying that, you know, when you get bought up by your competition, how does that change how you do your business? You know what I mean? But now let's just say for argument's sake that the Pepsi-Cola thing has nothing to do with the trajectory of this business. How does SodaStream actually impact the planet? Well, like we say in almost every video on this channel, it seems, it really depends on you. If you're buying one case of sparkling water to mix with tequila and lime at a party, it's way different than if you're buying like several cases a week because you're using sparkling water to drown out all your sorrows. Now at this point, we can probably all agree that like single-use plastic bottles are terrible for the planet, obviously. However, there's some arguments around aluminum cans that we need to talk about as well. Because see, we made a video about liquid death and we had a whole bunch of comments from you revealing the fact that there's plastic inside of aluminum cans? How did we not know this? Like, is this not a thing that we should have known forever? So yeah, we did some digging into it and it's crazy. Basically, there's this protective coating inside of a can because most soft drinks that come in cans are corrosive due to their acidity. Uh, yikes. As a result, a plastic polymer lining is added to shield the aluminum from the soda and thus preventing them from reacting together. We, we drink this stuff, guys. It's crazy. Now, this lining is removed in the recycling process along with the can's exterior coating and any other contaminants and whatnot. They do this by just melting down the metal at really, really high temperatures. But as we've talked about on this channel before, recycling is not a perfect science. Once your household recycling leaves your hands, it's really hard to tell what actually happens to it. In an ideal world, you should be able to rely on your local recycling services, but sadly, recycling is just not very efficient and it's not very consistent. So what's recyclable in one place might not be recyclable in another place. So we really should be avoiding recycling whenever possible. And SodaStream does offer a solution to that problem. Now, SodaStream is not the only at-home sparkling water appliance, obviously. Competitors like Drinkmate and uh, the Sparkle Beverage System even have more bells and whistles than the SodaStream system. Like being able to carbonize beverages other than water, which is kind of nifty. Wonder if you could carbonize milk. 
I don't like thinking about that, actually. I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete that thought now. However, SodaStream still dominates the market. That's because their real competition is not other machines, it's canned sparkling water beverages. But are their claims about being cheaper and better for the planet enough to convince consumers to ditch their favorite sparkling water brand and make it themselves like a peasant? So let's break down some theoretical numbers based on some theoretical consumption by you, the viewer, today watching this video. A soda stream machine starts at around 70 bucks and goes up to 160 bucks, while eight packs of LaCroix bubbly and AHA or whatever it's called sparkling water is right around $4. If you're keeping your home like doomsday prepared with your favorite fizzy water and your family downs multiple cans a day, then it wouldn't take long for your soda stream machine to start saving you some serious money. But then there is the issue of replacing your CO2 canisters. But it's honestly pretty easy because any brand of canister will work with a SodaStream machine. Unlike Keurig machines that literally reject coffee pods that are from any other brand, SodaStream makes it really easy for you to use the cheapest and most convenient option that you can find. They also have a refill program where you can send in your empty canisters and then get discounts on the next one. Now I have thought about this actually, and what I think I would do, and I've seen people do this online, is you can get one of those big CO2 canisters and you can sort of tuck it somewhere in your kitchen and get an adapter hose that goes from the industrial size CO2 to your regular soda stream, and then you have kind of like infinite CO2 and therefore infinite spicy water. Why is it spicy? And then you're not having to get new refills all the time and it's better for the planet because you just reuse the same canister over and over again. So yeah, if you're hucking back bubblies like it's the cure to cancer, then a soda stream is gonna save you a lot of money. And it's also gonna cut back on the amount of waste that your household creates. They're kind of like the antithesis of the coffee pod machines that we've talked about in previous videos. Hate, 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 hate. Double hate. Loathe entirely. However, if you only grab a case of sparkling water here and there for parties or a special occasion, then a soda stream could just end up being another one of those unused appliances taking up space in your cupboards, like that little Instant Pot that you bought four years ago, when Instant Pots were like kind of all the thing and like every blog was putting out like an Instant Pot recipe. It seems like every couple of years there's this new kitchen gadget that everybody falls in love with and is fascinated by and oftentimes those appliances end up going in the landfill because the enthusiasm that people have for instant potting their dinner or frying whatever they can possibly fry in their air fryer dies off and that's really too bad because there's a lot of resources that goes into making these products and a lot of money that goes into buying them so with the soda stream, I caution you to genuinely look at your consumption. And is this something that makes sense for you? Honestly though, the Pepsi thing kind of irks me. It rubs me the wrong way. I feel like for a company that is apparently in business to produce an alternative to single use plastics and, and aluminum cans, God, being bought out by the biggest can and bottle manufacturer in the world is just like not really the look, you know? I don't know, does that discount everything that this brand is trying to do for you or is it still a valuable product? Does it still serve the purpose it was there to serve? It's just sad that the money is going to Pepsi now. I'm curious to hear what you think. Leave your comments down below. Literally like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next one. But here in North America, most people, I don't know why I do it. I don't know why I do that accent.